Nikon Z lenses. There's so many of them that third party also made a few of those as well. Yes, today we are looking at the Viltrox 20mm f2.8 autofocus lens for full frame Z cameras. 20mm full frame autofocus for $158. And you know what? They put a metal mount on it and USB-C port for $158. I really like in this lens, but let's have a look at the optical quality, at the build quality, the feel, you name it. You name it. Let's Indoors. do that. Indoors. Who goes outside with because a wide angle lens? Because it's raining. Okay. Exactly. Okay, specification times. The lens, as you can see, is very small and light. So it's about five and a half centimeters long, 157 grams in weight, metal mount, USB port, 10 elements in eight groups, seven diaphragm blades, and close focusing distance, only 19 centimeters. Okay, so let's talk about the feels, Becky. Um, looking at this lens, the focusing ring is very smooth. It basically feels very similar to Nikon native Z mount lens. The mount is metal, there's a USB-C port for the future firmware updates, all the contacts, so it gives you the autofocus and EXIF data, and if you look at it, it's quite compact. It is. I think that the key thing to take home with this one is that it is a lightweight lens and it is an inexpensive lens. So if you're comparing it with something like this, no, you're not going to get the same build quality as a Nikon Z lens, but I do feel like it it has a similar feel to those more compact Z lenses, like the 28 f2.8 or the 40 f2, although those are plastic mount lenses, but this one has a similar exterior feel to that. Yeah, it's, it's almost the size of the pancake lenses, 28 and 40. But also we talked about having a smaller range of lenses. So now we have 1.8 and 1.2 lenses, why not have 1.4? In this case, 1.8 20mm is about that size. 2.8 lens is basically half the size. Mm. So if you don't need the ultra best performing 20 in the world, because maybe it's not your focal distance, but you don't mind spending $150 just to get a small lens in your pocket. And if you ever need it, it's there. It has also focus. So no fussing about with manual focus or anything like this. That's right. You know, it's a really nice lens to have just for that reason. Inexpensive, not your focal distance. You have it, you use it back in the pocket almost a little like a size lens, you know. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. One thing I do like about it as well, which I would say is a pro, is the fact that it takes 52 mil filters. These are filters that have been around for literally decades. So if you have a circular polarizer, an ND filter or anything like that, and you want to do some landscape work with it, you can just put it straight on. I think that that's a really nice plus point because a lot of these third party lenses do tend to have slightly odd filter threads and this makes it very accessible. Yeah, and if you want to get into black and white photography, it's arguable with digital form, but there's a bunch of filters, color filters available in 52 millimeter diameter. So those are easiest to find and Nikon has a lot of those in all different colors. This lens is our first Wheeltrix lens that we tried ourselves. I know that Wheeltrix released quite a few lenses for that mount now, but this is our first and the build quality, especially for the price, feels very, very nice. Now, we also had this lens with Michael F3 Addis, who runs Nikon Owner London Group, and he not only tried it for architecture work in color and black and white, but also tried on the infrared converted camera. Mm. And he was very impressed with the distortion or lack of it okay. on this lens and the sharpness overall, especially for the price, but also for infrared shooting, he said that this lens doesn't have any hot spots. And this is very important if you have infrared converted camera. This is particularly interesting because the Z lens from what I have read does have hotspots on the 20mm 1.8. So this makes a really nice option if you do have an infrared converted camera or if you're using infrared filters. Also, infrared filters in 52mm size are much easier to come by than the larger ones and are a bit cheaper too. I love a good MTF chart. I love the fact that they put it in the instruction manual, but 
it's too late. You've already bought the lens. You've already broken the seal on the box. So what if you don't like it? <laughs> anyway, very impressive. One thing I will say is that on our version of the lens, at least the lens hood doesn't actually click into place. So when you put it on, there is a tiny bit of resistance. It almost feels like there's a magnet at the click point but it doesn't fully lock even though the dot lines up with the indicator on the lens. I don't know if that's just our version or it's symptomatic of all of them. I don't feel like it's gonna fall off when I'm walking around with it, but it is worth bearing in mind that potentially this is a small caveat for all future lenses like this. I've taken this lens out and about on the town, I went to Camden, I went to central London, Piccadilly, and basically tried to see what it was like in a real life situation. I didn't take any of the lenses with me. It was just me, the Viltrox, and my camera. One thing I will say is that in environments where it's incredibly crowded, where you have lots and lots of people, the 20 mil really excels because you can fit so much in and you don't really have to work hard to get to the shots. These are unedited, so please bear that in mind. <laughs> Which is good because I can tell you straight away that if you're going to talk about vignetting, so vignetting dissipated at about 5.6, so it's 2.8. If you photograph in lots of areas with this kind, you will notice this. Again, nothing too difficult to correct in the post, but I can see that you can see a bit of vignetting at 2.8 and then it definitely becomes faint at 4.5 and disappeared by 5.6. It deals with flare pretty well. There is some flare, but I didn't particularly notice it to be distracting. And there were points where the sun actually did decide to come out while I was walking around London, which was amazing. In terms of focusing, I have no complaints. When I had subjects that were walking across the frame, the camera and the lens together would focus nice and quickly. Um, sometimes that would mean that I'd get these shots that I wasn't expecting because there was a person, you know, in motion, but it was great. And overall sharpness was really, really good. You'll get some distortion in the corners if you are very, very close to the building or you're pointing upwards, all the usual stuff that you would expect when shooting with a very wide angle lens. If you're close to the buildings and things like that, we had some elongated people when they were right in the bottom corner that that's kind of unavoidable with a wide lens. That's right. It always puzzles me when people say, yeah, when I put a person on the left side of the frame on 15 millimeter focal distance, why is it so distorted? Mm. <laughs> that's why it's a wide angle lens and it is there. But surprisingly, I was quite impressed with a lack of distortion on the lens. It's well corrected. Again, very little post needs to be done in there. And it's all about framing. So if you point it towards the building, of course, you will get convergent verticals. Of course, if you come close, you will get a little bit of distortion in the corners. But overall, it's pretty good. The borrow distortion, it's pretty controllable. All I would say is if you need something that is at the very top performance level, in this focal length, the 21.8 Z lens is there for you. If you are looking for a small lightweight walkabout 20 mil for a bit of street photography or a bit of landscape, then this is a really fantastic option. And as you say, only about $159. So it would be a bargain at twice the price, if I'm honest. <laughs> indeed, indeed, I absolutely agree with you. A uh, nice little tiny lens. Uh, I really like what's coming out of view trucks lately with all the autofocus features. So for some of you who don't like to use manual focus glass, you now have third party lenses with full autofocus that perform really, really well on a full frame Nikon Z bodies. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. And if you'd like us to do more videos like this in the future and review more real truck lenses, definitely let us know in the comments below. And don't forget, there is super thanks as well. 